I want to take you back to the days in Calc 2 when we were calculating volumes. We'd have some sort of solid. There were several ways that we, we did volumes. We did washers and rings, but um, the things I want to talk about is the slices, volume by slicing that we did. So I've got this object here that I'm trying to draw. I'm trying to draw a 3D object, trying to make it look kind of like a football or something. I don't know, some blob here. Um, and the way I want to think about calculating volume is by slicing it. So this is this is what we did in Calc 2. So we've got this axis that let's say runs through it in one direction. And we're going to take planes that are perpendicular to that axis. So when it passes through that axis, it passes through each plane is completely perpendicular to that axis. Now this plane that I drew doesn't hit this, right? But if I did one right here, there'd be a, a plane right, that would slice here and it would intersect that surface in some curve. Right? That there's some some curve that's that's the intersection, that's the cross section of this of this object with, with that plane. And what we did in Calc 2 is we said, well if I could calculate the area of that cross section and then I'd give it a little bit of thickness, right? And so you get this little bit of volume then and you'd add up all those little bits of volume for all the slices all the way from over here to over there. Essentially what we did is say, you know, if that's the x-axis, let's say, then I'd have an area function. That is, each slice would have an area and it would depend on which slice you had. So for this value of x over here, you might have a small area. For another value of x, you might have you know, a big area, and for over here you might have another small area. And you'd multiply that area by a little bit of thickness, a little bit of distance in the x direction here, dx. And then you'd integrate all of those from, from some starting point to some ending point, from A to B, right? And that's the way we'd calculate volume. That was volume by slicing. And when we did this back in Calc 2, we generally did it in, in such a way that each slice was recognizable. You could say, oh man, all the slices are circles, or oh, all the slices are triangles, oh, they're all rectangles or something, that every slice looked like every other one, and we could come up with a formula for the, for the area. The thing is now, I want to be able to look at um, a volume that's not always the same for every slice. So, um, you know, in the situation we're in right now, you'll get more and more general as the quarter goes on. But right now, let's just say we've got a rectangle that along the x-axis is between A and B. And the y-axis is between C and D. And then for every point... Um, in there, you've got a function to find up above here, whatever that looks like. All right, so this is over that, that's over this. So there's my surface. Um, Z is some function of X and Y. Okay, And if I think of this by slicing, so let's say like we did before, for each value of X, I've got a slice. So I look at a plane perpendicular to the X axis. Well, that plane is going to be parallel to the yz axis and it's going to intersect here. Actually, let's do this in a different color. It's going to intersect over here in some slice. Right? If I knew the area of that slice, I could give it a little bit of thickness and then do that for a whole bunch of slices and add them all up to get the volume. Well, the thing is, in this case, depending on this function, each slice may look a little different than the previous one. Right? However, back in Calc 2, we also had a way of calculating that slice. So that area as a function of x is, well, how do you calculate the area underneath a curve between c and d here? Right? Well, that's an integral from c to d of this function f of xy dy. That is, you're taking this interval here and you're cutting it up in a bunch of little pieces. So in that direction right there, that's parallel to the y-axis. That's a little bit of dy. So you get those little widths times these heights to get areas. Right? Now, in this integral, x is a constant. Right? 
you pick a value of x, you got to calculate this area. Well, that x isn't changing for this whole this whole area calculation. You may come back later and say, okay, now I want a different x, and I'm going to look at a different slice. But for this particular value of x, I calculate this integral this way. Um, so the total volume looks like um, an integral from a to b of this area function dx, but that area function, let me do this back in blue now, is the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, and then you're integrating that dx, so this, this thing. This is what's called an iterated integral. You first integrate with respect to y from the limits that are put on y, and then you integrate the result with respect to x. Okay. Fubini's theorem says that if f of x, y is a continuous function, continuous on some rectangle R, where R is defined as, um, you know, X is between A and B. This is the picture we have drawn up above. And Y is between C and D. All right, so you're continuous on a rectangle. Then the double integral over the region of F of X, Y, dA is the iterated integral, the same as the iterated integral, the integral from A to B, the integral from C to D of f of xy dy dx. It's also equal to the integral in the other order. That is, I could have gone back up here and said, well, I don't want to slice this way. I want to slice this way. And I want to look at those areas, and then I'm going to give them a little bit of thickness. All right. So you can do this integral in either order. Do the x's first and then the y's, or do the y's first and then the x's. Well, if we do them in the other order, uh, this is the integral from c to d, the integral from a to b, f of x, y. The inside integral now is dx, and the outside integral is dy. Okay. This is Fubini's theorem. The double integral is equal to either one of these iterated integrals. Right? Remember, there's a difference here in that when you think the double integral, you're taking that region and chopping it up into a bunch of little rectangles. Each rectangle has an area dA, and you're giving it a height function of f. So you have area times height is volume, and you're adding up all these bunches of um, these tall columns. Um, you're adding up all their volumes. Here, you're calculating an area of a slice, giving it a little bit of thickness, and then adding up all those um, slabs, doing this first uh, in one direction or doing it in the other direction, slicing it the other way. Okay, so they're different calculations, but you're still calculating the volume and you end up with the same uh, answer. Okay, that's Fubini's theorem.